Blue Blue Nation, welcome back to episode number 57 of... Hashtag... Ask Leveling TV. All right, guys. So uh, we've made it through 56 episodes. If you're new to the show, welcome to our world. This is um, mm -hmm. the show where we take your questions on Q&A when you use the hashtag Ask Leveling TV. When you post them on social media, you can post them on Twitter, on Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook at these handles right here. Make sure you're following us over there as well. And uh, yeah, so um, what's going on? I what? love this show because it's like all the content is based directly on what you guys want to know. So it gives us a lot of insight to like what things you guys are interested in learning about. And I'd say most shows are mainly about nutrition, don't you think? It seems like they are. It's like, I feel like it's become like a nutrition Q&A show. But we also talk a lot about workouts. And yeah, and honestly, like yeah. this is an open show. So uh -huh. it's, it could be about anything. It could be about yeah, just life in general, motivation, uh -huh. sports, whatever it is. Like you guys can fire the questions. We're an open book. And um, it just so happens that this show is going to be a Snapchat only show because um, we only have access today to the Snapchat questions. So um, we're just going to have to roll with what we have here. So um, if we, you know, it does take a little while to get to your questions as well. So if you ask them, like you can't just expect them to be answered next week because there's a big backlog. Mm -hmm. But if you have asked us on Snapchat over the last little while, they might get answered this show because, like I said, for uh, we only have access to Snapchat today. So keep surprising you guys with when your question is up. So you keep watching. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's jump into the show. First okay. question on, of course, on Snapchat from Lotus XS says, what is your highest calorie meal of the day? Should my three main meals be roughly the <laughs> same size or is the usual big dinner the way to go? Um, I think for me personally and for you probably, like our biggest calorie time does end up being dinner. I'd say most of the time, although we're pretty even between breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like I'd say we have pretty well-balanced nutrition in that sense my but i my biggest you is, kind of slam my the biggest, calories after your workout my biggest is like the first meal really like because yeah. that's when that's true for you that's probably the biggest every day yeah because you have both your post-workout shake and your like breakfast yeah in the same sitting because, so that's almost like two for one because i train yeah. fasted a lot mm -hmm. of the time so when i come home not only do i have my post-workout shake but then like right within like 20, 30 minutes of that, I make my full meal yeah. and I really pile in the calories there as well. It's so like two meals happening within a 30 minute window. So yeah. I'd say that would be the, the biggest for you. But I think I kind of do things differently because I train later in the day. So it kind of depends on like what works for your lifestyle and everything. But it sounds like you're asking like, is the usual big dinner the way to go? For some people, yes. It, for you, I don't know. It kind of depends on your life situation and your goals and everything. For We've learned, one thing we've learned over the years in the nutrition world is that meal timing is less important than your overall daily calories so i would say focus first on getting your calories right for the day make sure you're not in a surplus if you don't want to be and then when you have them is less important yes but if you really want to like dial it in like the calories after your workout are going to be used most beneficially because you're most you're most insulin sensitive at that time so if you do have some more carbohydrates the, right. the muscle cells are open they're ready they're like come to me where the fat cells are kind of shut off at that point. So um, that's the important thing. If you're going to have the biggest calorie meal, I would have it after your workout. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or if you're doing like intermittent fasting or something, it could be in your morning as well. So if you're doing intermittent fasting yeah. and you're breaking your fast with your post-workout, that's the time like I do just to get in the calories. Mm -hmm. It just kind of comes down to like what your main goal is. Okay, so is Ison Chavarria says, my name is Ison, and I wanted to know what are the best type of food for me to eat, eat every day for muscle growth. And I also wanted to know how I can order Live Lean Afterburn um, CDs because I would like to join the Afterburn program, and it's been really hard to find the right coach. All right, so... First question is the best food seed every day for muscle growth. Yeah, I think I think you may have asked this that. This is a similar I, question. I, yeah, right? I think yeah. you asked that maybe last week, so that's a... You that gotta, was best foods to get ripped, but this one's specifically about muscle growth, so maybe that's I mean, a little different answer. It's not, really. Like, it's it's a, it's a it's about calories at the end of the it day. Is, like, for yeah. muscle growth, you gotta same eat... Same foods, more of Yeah, them. like, it's yeah. like the same foods. Mm -hmm. More... Eat more of them. Yeah. From leanness, it's the same, same foods. foods. Eat less. Eat less of them. Yeah. It's so, really not magic. And um, how can I order Live Lean Out okay, CDs? So, Talk li about the CDs. CDs? Like, what's yeah, a CD? That's what I mean. I feel like we need to clarify. Sometimes yeah. people think that what they're buying is like CDs and they're going to be mailed to their house. 
We do. We live in the year programs. 2017, <laughs> people. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, we're not knocking you, but it's like no. we're like our business model is based on like to some people maybe like you're so futuristic the way that it works, but it's literally like. We live in a digital world now, people. Like it's a world where it's, it's instant, instant gratification, yeah. And it cuts the cost because there's no shipping. It's like right. you buy something, you instantly want it. That's what you get. And it cuts the waiting time. You don't have to wait three weeks for a delivery. You yeah. have it right now. So to answer your directly your question, it's a digital download program. So as soon as you buy it, you'll get an email to say sign up for especially for Living and Afterward mm -hmm. and be like create your username, password. Um, sometimes it gets lost in your junk mail. A lot of times, the same thing with Team Live Lean. If you guys join up for Team Live Lean, you're like, where's the email? I wanna get signed up. It's probably in your junk mail. If not, email us and we'll get you set up right away. Um, so it's, there's no DVDs, no CDs with that program. It's digital downloads. Mm -hmm. And we really pride ourselves on great customer service. We like do. We want to be, so it's, it's important for us to make sure that you are happy customers. So if you buy something from us, and you're not happy with it, we're gonna make it right. You know, we want to make sure that you guys are getting the programs, you're following them, you're getting results. So you can just be sure that everything you buy from us is real and it's going to help you and we'll help you figure yeah. it out. Um, but finding the right coach, that's a whole nother topic because we do coaching, but when you follow a program like Afterburn, essentially, Brad or whoever wrote the program you're following is coaching you through the program, but it's not as direct or one-on-one -on -one as if you were to become a coaching client. So it's up to you if you want to go with one-on-one -on -one customized coaching. That's another separate program. Um, but all of our digital instant download programs are kind of like as if you're getting coached because you're I mean, following a program written by a coach. Seriously, if you send me like if you send me an email, I'm going to answer you. <laughs> like yeah. you literally. If you send Jillian Michaels an email because you bought her DVD, she's not going to email you back. <laughs> and, and I know I've said this before, but I, but like just like you said, I pride myself. We pride ourselves on over delivering, and over servicing, with you guys. and connecting, like really making sure that you are getting results. because yeah. we do care. I mean, like look at what we're doing yeah. right now. We're answering these questions on social yeah. media, like just taking up our time to do that mm -hmm. because we really want to get the word out there, spread the word. And you know, you guys are giving us your attention, which is so huge to us because this fitness world is so overwhelming with the amount of people giving out information there. Mm -hmm. So we highly things everywhere. Yeah. So like, we highly no. appreciate your guys' time, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, so that's why we do these shows and we can answer questions, but you know, for people who actually buy our programs mm -hmm. and support our business, like we go even above to help you guys out with that. Yeah, and the right coach for you is the person that motivates you the most. So we hope that we motivate you a lot. Um, but go with, you know, work with whoever like lights that fire for you, you know, that and makes you excited to work out. Inspires that's the right you coach. by them walking. Yeah. And walking they walk the, the walk yeah. or talk the and, talk. <laughs> and speaking of coach, we actually just hired a new coach mm -hmm. um, onto our Live Lean coaching team. Yeah. Um, so you guys have seen him on pre, we've had him on two other episodes. His name is Jeremy. He's been and, on four no, three, so far. Three, yeah. three or four, yeah, four, four episodes, episodes so now. Far. So yeah. um, we just aired a new episode with him. He did a solo video for us. Yeah, it was, it was the great. Sugar Swaps is a great video. He's yeah. taken on like a quite a few of our clients already. Yeah, he's um, got a handful of live leaners that he's coaching personally one-on-one. -on -one. And they've been loving him. Oh my so. God, his clients are freaking obsessed with him. They're like, oh my God, he's changing my life after like two weeks. Yeah, so, so Jeremy's doing a great thing. Amazing. We're gonna have him yeah. back on the podcast as well. He's he's uh, he's based out of Los Angeles, so he's gonna come down to San Diego here. We're gonna shoot some videos with him as well. Um, but we're growing our team. Like we're seriously, like we got some more uh, video editors on our team now. Like it's it, the vision is coming. To fruition. So I know yeah. I know I'm kind of Someday going on a tangent. Coaches, I'm going on yeah. a tangent here, but I know. this stuff fires me up because like I have a vision for this company, this mission, and it's all happening because yeah. of you guys. So uh -huh. let's let's move on. All right, you read the next question. Okay, next question on Snapchat from Chantel E. K. or Chantel K. Hi Brad and Jess, me and my partner are big fans from Manchester in the UK. Can I be cheeky and ask two questions? Okay. I'm relative. I'm. I am a rel I am a relatively active female with 80% clean diet. I am having trouble shaping my upper arms. I know that lifting weights won't make them bigger, but as I'm losing some more weight and they're getting more tone, I'm noticing that sort of makes them look bigger. I just want some nice lean arms, but genetically I hold a lot in the upper part. Also, for the last few years, I've noticed my upper abs stick out and look a bit puffy. What am I doing wrong? Seeing as I was cheeky, I'll ask another. If we visit <laughs> San Diego one day, will you kick our butts if we visit? Thanks, Chantel. I love it. That's so cute. Um, 
I love you guys in the UK. I swear, <laughs> like, it's just, is that weird to say that? But I feel like everyone who follows us from the UK is just freaking awesome. And I really want to visit you guys. But so, yes, come to San Diego and I'd be happy to kick your booty in a live workout. Um, but OK, so let's talk about the upper arms. I know we've kind of like beat this topic to death, but it's like when it comes to getting bulky or slimming down, it's kind of like you were saying with the gaining muscle versus losing weight, it comes down to your calories. It's like if you're eating more calories than your body needs, that kind of uh, manifests itself as what we think of as bulk. So your body's kind of getting bigger and puffier all over. So that's probably what you're seeing is that your diet is, um, even though you say you're eating clean 80% of the time, it's possible that you're eating clean and your portions are too big. Like you're just eating too much clean food. Like we need to be really clear with you guys. Eating clean is great for you. It's the best way you can eat is to eat healthy foods the majority of the time. But if you're eating too much clean food, it's still too much food. Like we can't emphasize that enough. It's like, you need to get your calories and macros on point if you want to see real results and get toned, slim arms. So rant over about that. Do you have anything to add no. <laughs> to bulky arms? <laughs> no, I mean, a lot of times it's, you know, it's hard for me to say, but it, it, sometimes it's, it's in your head. A lot mm. of times it's like you may think you look too big, like you, you gain size quickly and you ask somebody else, they're probably like, you look great. Like it's mm -hmm. more in your head. You know, it's always the thing, like when you look in the mirror, you always pick up the things that you feel like are mm -hmm. a negative. You go to the negative yeah. right away as opposed to the positive. So that's true. That's um, a really good point. That, you know, you take that for what it's worth, but that may be something, you know, I would say like take some before and after photos Absolutely. and show us Progress and we could help you out with that. But, um, and I bet you, you'd surprise yourself even because after, you know, three, four weeks of dedication on a plan, like knowing uh, the plan, the results you want to achieve strategically, like figuring out what kind of workouts you're going to do, how you're going to eat and everything. And you follow that diligently for three to four weeks. You compare those progress pictures. You are guaranteed to see change. I've never had a client not see any positive changes at all after like three or four weeks yeah. of dedication. So I would encourage you take those pics, share them with us if you feel comfortable doing so. And we can help encourage you to, you know, keep working hard on your calories and macros and everything. Cause it, it just to remind you again, it's not just about eating clean 80% of the time. Like that's great. But if you're not getting the results you want, it's probably a problem with your portion size. And then you mentioned uh, puffy upper abs. So I've never had this question before. <laughs> um, so usually it's puffy lower abs. Yeah, right? usually it's puffy yeah. lower abs and it's usually a bloating thing. Yeah. So if it's puffy upper abs, what I probably think, what I can think what it may be is like your ribs may be protruding because you have poor posture. Uh -huh. um, that could be, yeah. So once again, it's just one of those things like just check out what your posture is like because there's no, such, the way stand, no such thing yeah. as like upper ab fat, right? Like it's just, it's <laughs> yeah. just fat, like it's just stored fat. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I would check out what your posture looks like, and you yeah, know, I think bloating uh, would be the first thing that comes to but, my but mind just, too. But just, but yeah. bloating comes like around yeah, the belly that's button. Yeah, usually low. So yeah. upper abs, it's. I think it's like if you just may have, you know, bad posture. Yeah. Hard, hard for us <laughs> to say without seeing any photos. So. Yeah. I hope these answers help. Okay, so Betty Boop Dan says, "Hey Brad, Betty Boop here. Just found out <laughs> I have a bulge disc in my spine, LH4 area, and I have to be careful with lifting because it can turn into a herniated disc." What exercise can I do to strengthen and support the back? I know deadlifts and rows are the holy grail for the back, but not sure if my form is correct or I'm making my back worse. I'm 31, 240 pounds, and 5'2". All right, Betty Boop. Betty Boop? Yeah, yep. Be Betty Boop. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> um, these questions are always so difficult for us to answer. Like, I feel like we should have, like, a disclaimer or not even a disclaimer, but just say, like, don't ask injury questions online because it's like a yeah. recipe for disaster. Like... Because we know nothing about we know you nothing or of, your form. We've never or, seen yeah. the form. Um, if we were to give you some exercises to try with a previous injury like that, um, that could turn into something more serious. It's just like we're giving advice blindly. And like I'm very um, cognizant of the fact that I'm only going to stay in my lane. Like when I, when, when I say that is You're you guys, injury specialist, if you guys yeah. ask me questions, I'm going to tell you. I can't help you with that because A, I may not have enough information. Mm -hmm. B, it may not be my specialty. Like to be a fitness coach, there is such an array of topics and yeah. specialties that you could be in. Yeah. And I'm going to stay in my lane and say like right. injury, not injury prevention, but um, training around injuries and everything is not my specialty. I would say you really have to go to 
an in person. Like I wouldn't even direct you to an online person that's it's a specialist true. because even somebody if that was our specialist, we still don't know. You. Somebody needs yeah. to be with you right there to assess your form yeah. and to see what's going on, get to the root of the problem, and then assess it from there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I would say like seek out help of a physical trainer or a physical therapist and get to the root of the problem and um, figure it out. But just don't ask blindly questions like this online to people because it can take you down the wrong, you know, the wrong rabbit hole and we just don't want to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And you know, for anybody out there with any injuries, you do need to be careful of those injuries and exercise lightly because yes, deadlifts and rows are great for building back strength. But if you walk into the gym and you're like, I'm going to do a 240 pound deadlift today, it's not smart for anyone, whether you had an injury or not. Like you need to work yourself up slowly, I mean, or, starting with proper But form. it's not even the weight. It's like if you're doing like 50 pound dead, yeah. deadlift and you're doing it with like a rounded back exactly. and wrong, like it's going to screw you up eventually. Yeah. So, um, you know, just to, to everybody out there, just remember this, like when you're asking injury related questions we can only give you such good answers because it's just there's so much more background that we need to to see before we could actually say something so just we just wanted to clear that up but you know we appreciate the question um i would love to see you take action on this and solution. don't just do nothing because like yeah i'm not going to recommend doing deadlifts and rows right now but recommend go to see someone yeah. in person and take care of this and learn exactly what like you should be able to answer this question after a few sessions with someone and then you know it's just, it's such an investment in your future. Like make the investment, take the time, go and do something because if you just, you know, don't do anything, you got to do something, but just, we're not the right ones to guide you there. Okay. Next question on Snapchat from Gump 1987. I don't know where to post this and thought it would be a good question for Ask Living TV. What is a good number in grams to aim for in sugar per day? or a number not to go over, and this includes all sugar, whether natural or added. All right, okay, so the sugar recommendations from, I don't even know who made this up, but it's like 25 and 35 are like the numbers for, male, for, for female and male, 25 grams for girls, 35 grams for males. I don't even know where that came from, but that's for added sugars. When we're talking about natural sugars, there really is no like number that you need to stay below. Um, but we you, don't count grams of sugars from bananas and berries and stuff. But, but we've got to put that in context though. Like yeah. that recommendation is based on people who are very, um, not active. So I would not classify yeah, them true. as being live leaners. Like you gotta, like when you look at these government recommendations yeah. out there, they're recommending for the average everyday person. And you guys watching this are not the average everyday person. Most of you so train. So when they recommend your, like yeah. 60 grams of protein total That's for true. the day is all you need. Guys. That's a great point. We are working out. Even if you don't work out in the gym, you're still working out. You're more active. You're walking more at least than the general population. If you're watching this show, mm -hmm. that's breaking down your muscles. We need to build it back up with the right nutrients. So we require, we require more nutrients because of the activity level that we have in our life. And it's much higher than the general population. And you so, know what else about added sugar is like, why would you want to have any added sugar? Like, why would you even want to have 25 grams of added sugar? Like I know well, sometimes it's hard to avoid, no, but like if I'm you're eating all whole foods that you cook at home, you have no added sugar. No, but I'm okay with added sugar. Like, like for instance, when I'm t like maple syrup is. It, oh no no no! But that's, that's yeah. Still okay. a sugar. I guess it's a sugar. Yeah. So, so technically yes. But I'm talking about like white sugar that you find like high fructose corn syrup that's coming in processed foods. That's what I think of as added sugar. But yeah, like maple syrup. So like different. what I'm saying is like if you look at like a recommendation for a post workout shake, like if you're in a muscle building program, you know, for my size, like I would like up eat or consume upwards of like 70 grams of carbohydrates in a right. post-workout shake. Right. So that's from like fruit, maple syrup. So it's not like I'm adding table sugar in there. Right. But then, you, but then people are like, well, the government only recommends 35 grams of sugar total for, but right. that's not for people who are training and right. need recovery and are athletes like we are. So yeah. um, take, so there's not, so I guess the, <laughs> we're going on a rant, but I guess the, an, the answer is there's no like number to hit for everybody. Everybody right. is different. Everybody has different activity levels. So, and don't get grams of carbs confused with grams of sugar. Cause they're not the same thing. You know, like you need to have a, quite a bit of carbs in your diet when you're athletic and you know, carbs provide you good energy and everything. So, 
yeah, don't try to limit your carbs to absolute zero. Some people will like come online being like, oh, I'm trying to have like a super low carb diet. How can I get zero carbs? And it's like, zero is not the goal. Just well, like zero is not the goal for your body fat percentage. Zero, zero is not the goal for anything. Well, if you had zero but, carbs, you wouldn't be eating any vegetables. Right, exactly. Or fruits and fruits and vegetables are so healthy for you guys, you know? So keep that in mind. It's like these sugar recommendations are just, they're not taking into account the fact that your diet's mostly healthy and you're athletic. So I'd say just ignore that. We don't worry about the number of grams of sugar that we take in because we know we're getting it from Good healthy sources. food sources. Yeah. yeah. Okay, a gump? Oh, same person? No, she oh. got, well, I mean, yeah, because it's a Snapchat only <laughs> show, so she got another one in. All right, gump, let's get to it. So, <laughs> hey, Brad, good morning. Hope you're having a good one. Just watching a YouTube video, and I had a thought about your and Jess's workouts. I'm wanting to compete in October. Really looking at going for that glute hammy separation. Not exactly sure how to get it, but I noticed that in yours and Jess's programs and workout videos, you don't seem to do a lot of hamstring curls on the leg machine or extensions on the machine. Just wondering if you do those and what you think the benefits of them are or aren't. I would love an answer soon, but this could be a yeah. good question for us. So actually, I remember uh, talking with you on Snapchat oh, about this question. Yeah. yeah, but I think it is a good question for the show as well yeah, sure. because you know there's it all comes down to what your goals are so if we had a program that was specifically for physique competitors male females that want to be on stage um, compete in bodybuilding or physique the program would be much different than somebody who is just um, you know training just for health or training for fat loss or like not not to get on stage so mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing um, our followers are more in that other category as Health, opposed yeah. to we want to be on stage. Well, um, yeah, our so, followers want to have like a beach body, but not like competition yeah. body. Yeah. So different, this. Different. So what we talked about when I talked to Gump nineteen eighty seven on Snapchat was this is when custom coaching comes into play, which we have that service. So we have a one on one online coaching service, what we talked about earlier in the show, where you give us what your goal is and we will come up with a customized specific plan to accomplish that goal. So Jessica has like mm -hmm. years of training experience and competition experience yeah, on sure. stage. Yeah, so I she, did nine shows myself. <laughs> so she understands this entire thing. Yeah, absolutely. Where, um, you may but I haven't created a program for it and the reason being, it's not a one size fits all process. Like, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like wherever you're coming in at, before your show is different starting point than someone else coming in for the same show. You know yeah. what I mean? So you have to determine your body fat percentage goals and your muscle growth goals and your symmetry and everything is important. That's, so when you train for a show, it needs to be your program. And that, you can't just follow a standard one. Yeah. So if you're looking online yeah. for like a physique competition show and it's a one size fits all, like it's kind of like, that's only going to get you so far because yeah. you got to work one-on-one -on -one with a coach that looks at you and like, oh, your shoulders need to come up or right. you need to build your booty. Exactly. Um, everybody's not the same. So everybody's going to be starting at somewhere different. Yeah. So you can't expect that a program like in Team Live Lean or something is going to be specifically custom to you to step on stage. Right. Those programs are like, we want to lose fat and this is how you do it um, for people who just want to be more healthy or mm -hmm. muscle building. It's not um, going to be something like stage ready type workouts. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So absolutely hire a coach. You know, if you're really serious about, you're saying you wanted to compete in October, um, now is a great time because you do need several months of preparation. So I'd say go ahead and hire a coach now. Um, at least do a starting out um, assessment to figure out what kind of things you need to focus on. What's nice about working with a coach is like they'll look at you and tell you, okay, they'll give you like a bullet point list. This is what I want yep. you to focus on. This, this, that, and the other thing. And here's how your diet should be. And then you'll reassess every couple of weeks and they'll see how your body's changing. If they're not seeing the changes they wanted from plan A, they're gonna create plan yep. B and they'll just keep on changing and modifying as you go to um, so that the program is really following you specifically, you know, and producing the exact result you want. And Jessica can speak from experience because she yeah. hired a coach when she was competing. Oh my gosh, I've had so, so many coaches. Yeah, so myself. it's just yeah. like if you're gonna take your fitness to that level, oh, yeah. you've got to invest in the coach. And I know when we talked, I was like, when you want to compete, it's expensive. You got your tanning, your suit, you got the food that you have to buy, oh the supplements, God, so the coaching. Much, yeah. There's a lot to it. So you gotta 
I um, poured thousands remember of dollars that. into but, my competition. So, so let's just get to the next question that she asks is like, so why don't we have a lot of hamstring curls and leg oh, right. extensions? Okay. So we do in um, muscle building style programs where it's more about hypertrophy and you want to get those fine details. Yeah, we do. But if it's a fat loss program or if it's a strength based program, we're, fo we're focusing more on the compound lifts mm -hmm. um, because that's what you build strength on and that's what burns the most calories is the compound lifts, not just these little isolation exercises mm -hmm. um, like right, the extensions. Exactly. But, yeah, it's, like it, but I'm not- Yeah, curls are not gonna burn near as many calories as like deadlifts, Yeah, so it's example. just, so it's, it's, that's why yeah. when you have a program that's designed for a certain goal, it's like, you know, this is why we're in the business that we are because we know these things that a hamstring curl um, is not gonna burn a lot of fat versus like what a barbell deadlift would, so. Right, but when you don't have a lot of fat to lose and you're already lean and you just wanna dial in that little, mm -hmm little area like right underneath yep. your booty then hamstring curl it out yes, girl like exactly. but these are the things you're going to learn with your training with your coach who's going to tell you exactly how many sets to do how many reps to do how much rest to take like your coach will figure out all those details for you yeah. okay david fuses says how much stock do you guys put into soma types the accuracy of it and how it affects your body composition muscle and fat growth versus how your body processes food etc is it supposed to affect which kinds of macronutrients are better suited to your body type? Or he's saying it's supposed to, but is it that valid? Yeah, so I think we've answered this question in the past. It may not be from you, but we have. We've talked about so soma types. If you yeah. just go into YouTube and just type in soma types, I think it's or actually body types, I think yeah. it's actually a title of one of these Ask Living TV videos. Mm -hmm. So you can find our full answer there. But to give you like kind of the Coles Notes version mm -hmm. of it, like there is some some thinking behind it, like if you're um, an endomorph, there's a certain type of training that would be more beneficial to you than if you're an ectomorph and that's, and if you're a mesomorph. So um, I think we answered it very clearly in that other episode. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say like just to save on time and if, if the, we have some diehard people here watching that have seen every episode, we don't want to repeat ourselves here. So go check out that episode unless and you have anything I, to Well, add. I do think there's some validity to it, but I don't think that anyone is purely a mesomorph or purely an endomorph. You know, everyone is some combination of the two, I guess, two. Yeah, I guess you're not going to be a combination of all three, but you're going to at least be a combination of two, like you're ma mainly meso with endo tendencies or something <laughs> like that. But you don't necessarily need to know that. What you need to know is I tried eating this way. It didn't work out for me as well as tr eating this way. And these are the things you learn with your experience. So I encourage all of you to like figure out a meal plan, test that meal plan out for at least two weeks, be really steady and consistent with it, and then you can determine this is working or it's not working. You're getting the results you want or you're not getting the results you want. Two weeks is enough time for you to see at least a trend in the direction you're going. Like you should at least see some fat loss or some muscle gain within a two week uh, window of time. I mean, obviously that's a short window of time. It'd be better if you could do a full month of testing, but you gotta give it at least a minimum of 14 days of consistency before you can determine even what your body type is or what macro split is working for you, okay? So there's some validity, but I, I, no need for labels like that when you can just kind of test yourself and adjust based on your results. Next question on Snapchat from Apex Forever. How often and for how long do you guys train your core? Also, do you ever train abs, feel the burn, and then all of a sudden everything just becomes easy? I'm still squeezing my muscles, but it's like it's hit a threshold where I don't feel it anymore. Uh oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think the opposite for me. Like when I'm training abs, like at the end, it feels like I can't do another rep because they're just, there's no energy left there. I've never like gotten to the point where I could do abs all day. Like, have you? Well, no, because like if you know, if you're doing it correctly, <laughs> like you should be, like you say you're tensing it, but- you feel the burn. Are you breathing properly? Yeah. So it's like breathing as much air and tensing as you can. Making sure you um, get a full contraction, so this, full extension, so instead pretty of just much, little mini reps. So there's like, pretty much like two different things you could do. You could extend the set by adding more reps and go higher reps, or you could add weight to the exercises yeah, it, to do, do it even, yeah. to make it even more difficult. Yeah. So um, those are some things that you should try. Um, you should probably check out my Live Lean Abs workout program. Yeah. So that's a, it's an ab direct training program. It has videos with it to show you how I do it, my breathing. I talk about the breathing techniques. I talk about the protocols, the form, the yeah. form it all in there. And it gives you like workouts that you can do at home. It gives you workouts at the, outside, at the gym. Um, there's something for everybody in there. And he's shirtless, so you get to see every contraction like in detail. <laughs> yeah, so you get to see the, the, the ripples. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I would recommend you get on that program, follow what I talk about in there to really get the most out of your direct ab training. Yeah, okay. Uh, same person again? Okay. All right, same person. So we have Apexer Forever again says, have you, uh, have you guys ever lost weight and then gained it back? What's your advice for someone struggling to get back on point after taking a diet break, still eating healthy, just no longer restricting calories or certain foods? Hmm. Have you ever lost weight and gained it back? Nope. Muscle weight though. Well, muscle weight because Don't of- Don't lie, you have. Because yeah. of sickness. Yeah, exactly. Just recently, Brad lost like 10 pounds and you've, have you put it all back on yet? I put it back on, yeah. He has, so, there you go. 10 pound fluctuation just like a couple we, months ago. So we've had a question like this, of course, in the past, because I think we've answered like 5,000 questions in the last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, remember the, when I talked, so we had a question like this and it was like, yeah, like, what do you do? What's, how do you what get do you motivated do? again? How do you get motivated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like once again, that right there is, is what motivation. motivates <laughs> you. So like when I'll tell the same story I told in the other video, when I, um, got over my sickness, like I didn't eat for days, stepped on the scale just to see where I was. I lost 10 pounds. I was like, I haven't seen me at 165 since like 10 years, 10 ago years at least. 15 years ago. And I was like, all right, <laughs> smile went on my face. It's time to get down. It's time to Program get dirty. Program creation. <laughs> Program creation. Let's go. Yeah. And that's what I use to um, fire myself up to get back into the gym, to get more foods in my diet, get the calories and back to on get point. going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah. the question. So What's your advice? For someone struggling to get back on point. Like, use, why are you struggling though? Like, <laughs> Use that adversity as your motivation to get going. There's Absolutely. no other answer that's going to get you fired up. It's, it's like you're not happy where you are, so get out of there. Yeah. And what's going, to have, what's, going to do, what's going to take you to get there? Taking action. Yeah. I think a lot of times this like place of struggling is just because you haven't really... Um, delineated like your, what is your reason why and you have this whole list of excuses that is keeping you in your struggle zone right it's like you wake up in the morning should i work out today oh no i don't feel like it because i'm not as lean as i used to be it's like forget that just go that's the just reason to work out yes should exactly. i work out today yes because i'm not as I'm lean not as, yeah. so <laughs> take your exact excuse the, and flip it into a reason why you should you know because it, it's automatically a reason why you shouldn't and I mean, the other thing is yeah. like, should I work out? The right answer or the right way to, um, <laughs> <It's say> yes. <laughs> the right way to um, phrase that is I get to work out. Yes, exactly. Like, Instead of do I have to, like I I'm get lucky enough to. to. Yes, All absolutely. All right, so hopefully our uh, passion came out on that one and we can move on. <laughs> All right, Wine Rules on Snapchat says, hey guys, if you only did a 20 minute treadmill hit session, 30 seconds on, 60 seconds off, would you still have a post-workout shake afterwards or would you leave it only for after weight training? I'm trying to lose fat. Aren't we all? <laughs> no, actually there's, there's a lot, there's, I, there's more live leaners. Um, of course there's probably more to lose fat than there is to gain, but we have like yeah. a decent amount of live leaners that want to put on size. Absolutely, so. yeah. And I feel like you and I are in that boat Because too. you can be skinny yeah. and you're still not living lean. Like this is the thing that people get wrong is they think being skinny is living lean. No, because they don't have any muscle. Channel. They like, don't have yeah. any muscle, mm -hmm. so they're not living lean. Like yeah. lean is lean muscle yeah. without the fat. It's not lean bones. It's not <laughs> <laughs> leanbonestv.com <laughs> um, no but so yeah post-workout shake after any type of workout yes yeah. your post-workout shake is part of your overall daily nutrition it's worked into your daily macros so if you if you didn't have it you would be lower on protein and calorie goals you could replace it with something else like have a whole food meal instead of a shake if you wanted to um you know, or you could just leave it out in general because it's only going to cost you like two or 300 calorie deficit. So sometimes for weight loss, I just tell people if you're only not hitting the gym one or two days a week, then just omit your post-workout shake and you don't have to replace it. Right. But it just kind of depends on what your goal is. And um, yeah, don't think of like you have to deserve that post-workout shake because of the intensity of the workout. 
you worked out, you worked out, you know, have your recovery drink. It's yeah, not I mean, that the, big of a deal. The, it's a good point. The only thing like I would do is if you feel like you didn't work out as hard, then you, didn't, the then you didn't earn as much carbs. So if you smash a leg workout, then it's like, get that in there. But if you dogged it and like you didn't do anything or you just went in and did a forearm workout, like <laughs> your body didn't like... burn as much glycogen as what you need to replace it with and recover with. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. All right, last question of the day um, from Apex Forever <laughs> again. <laughs> so as you could tell, this was a Snapchat this only is show. Your show. <laughs> this is uh, what happens when we don't get the questions in. Um, so. Do you and Brad ever do steady state cardio just like going on a run? If so, how long, far, often? <laughs> Bro. Do you even watch our channel? <laughs> you used to jog. Yeah, I did. But that was like pre living TV. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. This I was never many did. years ago. I mean, I, I do it just to like test myself every once in a while. Like I'll go for a two minute or two minute, a two mile <laughs> run just to, and I'll be like, I need to beat 16 minutes, two mile run. Um, I used to like, I remember I was training with a friend back home and she used to like running like um, cross country style so we'd go run 5k's and we time ourselves so I do it just for, for performance yeah. just to test myself and I don't think most people would consider that long distance two miles or five miles I don't know it <laughs> depends on what you guys what, how, what kind of runners you are but yeah to answer your question no we don't currently do any of that I've actually find found that the results with my body and just the way I feel and everything is worse when I include like long steady state, slow duration type of stuff. I feel my very best. I get the best results leaner than ever when I keep my workout short, high intensity interval style. And I would say under 20 minutes. So yeah. for but, my cardio workouts, strength training, I'll go a little bit longer, but yeah, I never do like slow steady state. Cause it just, I don't like the results, to yeah, be honest. So, but if some people like the mental side of it. Like it's a mm -hmm. good release for them. It, it's a good stress reliever for them. So if that's why you're doing it, then by all means do it. But if your goal is like, I want to burn fat, I want to get lean, then it's the hit way, baby. It breaks my heart to see people like out on the street jogging and looking like they're hating life. Yeah, though, and, they're so. and they're just like, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Just jamming and on those joints. Their knees are just boom, And the posture boom, like this. Boom. And the freaking like everybody on the podcast can't see what I just did there, yeah. but it's like yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that what is. Are you but doing? If this was my Talking knee, about the knees? yeah, the yeah. knee, and this is the calf, and just yeah, and it's like um, chronic overuse injuries can yeah. happen with your knees, your hips, your lower back. Um, it just I feel like steady state exercise like that can just do a lot of more harm yeah. than good. So that's just my opinion. But all right, yep. ladies and gentlemen, all right, that is the show. Uh, so question of the day is I just kind of sparked that idea was um, if you had to say in your living journey did you need to lose fat or did you need to gain muscle or both to live lean yeah um, no like primarily or primarily okay. lose fat or gain muscle I had to, to quote that. unquote call yourself a live leaner what would it have been mm, or what it. is it yeah so. we want to know because I bet you we're gonna be surprised that mm -hmm. some you know if some people probably need to add muscle and they're kind of yeah. an ectomorph type body. So Yeah, say down below, lose weight or gain muscle. And you can also explain a little bit more of your story because we love getting to know you guys. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank and you. Hoop. Literally. Literally. Boy.